What's up, guys? Thank you for coming to OLED Wave Paper Reading Channel. We're a channel that reads the latest archived work, including the classical papers. Today, we're going to be uh, reviewing a recently brewed work by Meta AI. Um, I think it's a. Uh, its title is iJEPA. Uh, this is uh, claimed to be the first AI model based on Yalakun's vision for more human-like AI. So first of all, what is um, Dr. Lekun's vision um, for more human-like AI? Uh, this is a, I'm not going to talk about uh, in that detail today. Uh, his vision is to create machine that can learn internal models of how the world works. Um, so I think it's important to understand what his internal model means. And uh, this work, let me open this. This work, uh, the paper's title is called uh, Self-Supervised Learning from Image with a Joint predictive architecture and you can see that's his um, word model word model applied on the image processing domain or vision domain so it, this is why the paper has a i in front of their method i joint uh, epa okay um before we jump into everything let's quickly uh, go over what's the idea behind the proposed method, okay? It's very simple. It's just a given a, a, a very, it tries to learn a uh, representation of the image. But what is different than the conventional method, which is showing either uh, the A or B in the figure number two, and the figure A is about um, the first method they talk about is called the invariance-based pretraining. What is invariance-based pretraining? So are you guys familiar with clip? Open as clip? That's uh, that's one type, one method of invariance-based uh, pretraining. You can see that you have an image encoder, you have a text encoder. And then what you want to do is you can you want to get a such a this embedding the green embedding, which is aligned to the text embedding. Okay, and then later on you can choose how to use this uh, embedding. Make sense? Um, this is also shown in the uh, figure A, uh, GIA joint embedding architecture. And also, they're saying that there's another way to learn the so-called embeddings, uh, which is the generative architecture, which is uh, fairly uh, commonly used in the current AI generation, generative content uh, stuff. For example, ChatGPT, GPT, or um, what do you call that for the vision, OK? To draw pictures. Um, I'm a speech guy, so I'm not good at this. Uh, so what it does is a given a input, for example, actually the image, okay, image, image uh, tensor or embedding, and send it to the uh, X image encoder, and then run the decoder. And decoder is conditioned on certain latent variables like Z, and then it generates a output, for example, Y. Y it could be it could be it could be image. It can also be text, and then that would be uh, compared with the ground truth y, right? So then you can uh, iteratively generate this by keeping feeding the y to the x, okay, see? And you can keep generatively uh, generate the stuff. Um, but according to the authors, there are drawbacks of these two methods. First, for the joint embedding architecture, the conclusion or the claim that also had was it's more likely to learn some very uh, high-level 
embeddings of the original X, Y. Uh, take the, for example, X is image, Y is an text, right? Uh, or uh, let's, let's call the, 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 the simple case. Suppose you, X is an image of cat, and the Y is an uh, squeezed or stretched image of cat. Then to make the uh, di difference between the two embeddings smaller, it, you are more likely to learn an embedding of a concept the cat. And you ignore the, the details of the uh, content in the, in the image. So this is why they also call this as a high level content or high level or semantic information of the uh, image, okay? Uh, for the generative architecture, uh, the author said this is more likely to learn a low-level embedding of the original signal or tokens. Why? Because all you have to do is just predict the tokens or the pixels, right? Um, and then the purpose of the C, a joint embedding predictive architecture, you can see uh, First of all, it's not generative architecture because you can see there's no, you don't have to run, uh, there's no generation, okay? The purpose is to try to learn an embedding like people did in the A, joint embedding architecture. But the only thing was different uh, is this part. I wonder whether you can see this, okay? Um, but what is the same is this part. Um, maybe the, the laws are different, but anyway, it's a distance-based loss, okay, or contrast-based loss. These two parts are the same. This purple circle parts are the same. And the encoder, I would say, you can use different decoder, but you can definitely use two same encoder here. But uh, this is the different part. You can see in, in, in the joint embedding architecture, this is the embedding you obtain from the training, okay? But in this case, the embedding is this. It's the output from the predictor. There's a one extra predictor condition on the latent variable. Um, to give you more concrete understanding of what it does, I would like to jump to figure three, the flowchart of iJEPA. You can see, but this is like the um, this is like x, this is like y, and you can see that uh, given the context x, when you pass x to an encoder, but then you can these are two different z's, latent variable. Okay, I want to see if I can let you see the picture. No, you can't see it. It's fine. Um, those are the z's. These are conditioned. Uh, do, uh, the, uh, so the predictor is conditioned on the z, okay? And then once you get the prediction, then you're going to be compare the predictor's output, and you can see that predictor's output is the embedding that you're talking about, okay? The, the vision embedding or image embedding. Sorry, it should be image embedding. This is the image embedding you want to get. And these are then compared with um, different patches in the target. You can see this one is compared with this one in the target, and this one compared to this. Uh, you can, then you notice why the context is just the one part of the target, not the whole one. Well, that's the tricky part. Uh, I think the author did this. Uh, other than doing this certain type of called data augmentation, for those of you who are not familiar with the data augmentation, let me give you a very quick explanation of it. It tries to, during the, for example, in the joint embedding architecture here, um, the data augmentation is that given the original uh, image X, this is a full image, okay? Then Y would be augmented, for example, it can be stretched, it can be squeezed or rotated or clipped, whatever. Huh? These are different type of augmentations. 
it creates a different pairs of x and y, although every time the x would be the same, but the y would be different. So this is the, the, the augmentation procedure. Uh, but this one, x and the y are always fixed, or uh, how to say that? Uh, you're not going to get any more augmented y's, uh, but what you have is just uh, a part of the x, okay? And this picture gives you more clear example of how the x and the y are created. You can see this is the x. So let's say uh, this is the x. I wanted you to see whether you can give the, the, the upper part of the dog head. So whether you can predict that this part. This is one part of y, right? One of the y. Whether we can predict that the dog ear. It's difficult, right? But it's not undoable because you're going to be training on tons of tons of um, training data. The scale is really large, and you may be able to learn that. Right? Okay. Talking about the results, you can. I I think I'm not a computer vision people, so I'm not going to dig into the details. But it shows very very strong results, especially when you compare the their method with the method. Without data augmentation, okay. This is a, remember this is the method that doesn't use data augmentation, and these ones are using the the, the DA, okay. And you can see the results are roughly the same, roughly the same. I wouldn't say this is a much much better. Um, I would say this is roughly the same. And what's the benefit of not using data augmentation? Okay, you got it. It's the reduced. So your training data wouldn't be multiplied by many, many times. So the time you're going to spend on the training would be significantly smaller than the, the time you spend on training the data augmented based models. Um, I think we have a, a rough number of this. Um, they only took uh, them 72, hour, 72 hours on 16. 800 GPUs to train such a uh, model, which could generate the uh, image embedding. That's really, really impressive. Uh, what's the speed up? Well, you can find those, definitely can find those numbers on the appendix, uh, how much they can speed up. But I think I will stop here today. And thanks for coming to our channel. Please subscribe our channel if you. Uh, interested in our uh, videos and also share the videos with your friend if you felt this is helpful to you and I'll see you next week thank you man.